G'day everyone, welcome to an All Cyclone Chasers National Public Cyclone Update today, the 15th of December 2015. My name is Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by a major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Just before we start this update, just a reminder for people who'd like heaps more information about cyclones and the monsoon, we do have a subscriber service at our website, ozcyclonechasers.com.au. Click on subscribe to OCC and you'll gain access to a lot more information as well as be supporting us in our quest to document tropical cyclones. Alrighty, and it's been a very long, slow build-up process to the wet season, if you don't, unless you live in southeast Queensland who have had storms, 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 non-stop almost. But if you live anywhere else in the state or anywhere else in northern parts of Australia, it has been a very slow build-up. But we are starting to see a very dramatic build-up across much of northern and western Australia. Now we've got very deep troughing across most of inland Australia here. No sign of a very strong ridge. Without any sign of a very strong ridge and deep troughing, a, an increasing northwesterly flow up here to the north of Australia. You can just start to see the edge of the monsoon trough pushing into uh, our synoptic chart here on the Bureau of Meteorology chart. Now that monsoon trough will intensify, will move further south and will eventually get over the top of Northern Territory, far northern Queensland, possibly even northern WA as we go into next week. That will hopefully finally be the catalyst for some very interesting weather across northern Australia. Across the Northern Hemisphere, we've got a cyclone that hit the Philippines yesterday. It was a very strong cyclone, and it remains a very strong cyclone. But the good news here for Australia is that it is a, it is a very small cyclone. Because it's so small, it's not going to disrupt the northeasterly trade winds through the Northern Hemisphere, which cross the equator and become our northwesterly monsoon. It's not going to disrupt them anywhere near as much as if, say, it was a very large cyclone. So yes, it's intense, but it's very small, and it's going to weaken very quickly uh, from around about tomorrow onwards. And in fact, what it will do is it'll actually help push a lot of these northeasterly winds uh, and make them stronger. And as they cross the equator, uh, they'll have a little bit more oomph to them, a little bit more guts to them. And as they go through the Java Sea, the Banda Sea, and eventually the Arafura Sea and into, uh, and into the Australian region, they'll still be able to pack a bit of a punch. And so our monsoon will probably be aided a little bit by the cyclone near the Philippines. And so you can see the monsoonal northwesterlies now as we get close uh, through the forecast period next Sunday and into Monday, getting up there to 20 to 25, even up to 25 to 30 knots at times across the Arafura Sea. You can see the two areas here of interest, or you mightn't be able to see them, but I'll point them out to you. The two areas of interest here are the North Kimberley and the Southwestern Gulf. Now, it could be one or it could be two tropical lows that form along that monsoon trough in those two regions. Also towards the middle to latter part of next week, we're expecting another low to develop out here near the Solomon Islands. That one will not come anywhere near Australia, so we're not even going to pay any attention to it because our hands are full with these two over here. But just something to be aware of is that there will be a low at the Solomons, but not coming towards us. We take a look at the winds about a kilometre and a half above the surface of the earth and they're a good indication at what's happening without the obstacles of the, the ground and, and a lot of the top topographical obstacles that we see. Uh, but they'll give us a good idea as, as to the wind strengths and where the winds are coming from. And what we can see here is that the first sign of a low will be around that southwestern Gulf area. We're going to see a lot of convergence, a, a lot of a, a lot of convergence just in here through the southern Gulf. See how all these, see how all these lines are coming closer and closer together. That's what we call convergence. And as we see that convergence, we're going to see very, very, very heavy rain across the Gulf of Carpentaria, possibly also onto the west coast of the peninsula and the southern uh, and the southern Gulf coast, as well as possibly even the western Gulf coast. Now, whenever we have a monsoon trough, the computer models tend to really struggle with interactions along that trough line. And so what we've got here is a possibility here of one low, another low, uh, possibly another low up here. And what we've got are uh, interactions between these systems that the computer models are really struggling with because A, the systems haven't formed yet. B, we don't know exactly how strong this monsoon is going to be. 
and C, we don't know where these little eddies and, and little low pressure systems are going to be in relation to each other. So there is absolutely no idea. The computer models can't give us a really good idea yet as to what exactly is going to happen. But we can see the dominant circulation on the GFS forecast model is this one off the North Kimberley. You can see a very strong monsoonal flow to its north, uh, getting up to about 40 to 45 knots at 850 hectopascals, so about 30 knots at the surface. But you can see another, uh, you can see while this low is the dominant there is another low here in the Gulf of Carpentaria and there's going to be a significant interaction there between these two systems on the GFS forecast model and that's where it throws the complete uh, the complete forecast out of whack this interaction between the two lows uh, and then we have one dominant low in the Gulf that becomes a tropical cyclone starts tracking southeast and then stalls around the coast of Queensland so uh, that is a very long-term perspective and it's not a perspective shared by a lot of computer models it is a perspective that is extremely doubtful because the interactions between the systems are not clear yet. If we take a look at the European model, it seems to have a slightly better handle on the interactions between the two systems. Uh, we have a, a situation here where that Gulf system is the first thing to form, uh, but what we end up seeing is uh, this low here and another low up here in the North Kimberley in the Timor Sea. Uh, and what we what we see is less interaction between the two systems. They're their own they're their own boss, if you like, as opposed to one being in control of the other. You can see they're both right along that monsoon trough, which is going to be lying just in inland of the top end coast. Very strong monsoonal influence from the north, uh, and you can see the direction of travel here for both systems. You can see the Gulf system travels to the east and over the eastern peninsula, and you can see the uh, the Kimberley system travels a little bit uh, in a much slower, more erratic motion. Uh, but what we can see is that both systems tend to intensify. Both systems seem to be packing more of a punch to their north than to their south, which is indicative of a very strong monsoon without a strong ridge. And so that's why we have a fairly stacked system to the north here in the Kimberley and a fairly stacked system to the north here in the tropics of Queensland. But uh, certainly positive signs there for some very heavy rainfall in the longer term. When we take a look at the next two weeks worth of rainfall, a lot of this rainfall falls in the second week. So the first week might be a real pretty slow, particularly for Queensland, might be pretty slow, but a lot of it will fall in the second week. Now you can see anywhere that's purple is looking at 50 millimetres plus uh, of rainfall over the next two weeks. Now this is using a forecast ensemble modelling, so it will blunt some of the rainfall totals. So some of the heavier totals will be blunted and some of the lighter totals uh may be missed altogether but uh, it's a fair indication here that if you live anywhere in that purple zone you're going to see some rain over the next couple of weeks some reasonable rain hopefully uh, if you're obviously in that yellow area you're looking at over 250 upwards up up to 500 millimeters of rain so you're looking at some significant rainfall totals across the western peninsula across the gulf country across the northeast arnhem also the northwest but very coastal in the northwest, uh, completely associated with a monsoon, uh, and also parts of the North Kimberley looking at some really substantial rainfall there. But look, when it comes to the monsoon, looking at a two-week rainfall chart is almost as useful as having breasts on a bull because a lot of this rainfall will hinge on where those lows move, how strong they are, and not only that, but how fast they move. Obviously, a much slower moving low is going to create a hell of a lot more rainfall. But it can at least give you a, a, a reasonable guide as to what's expected at the moment given the current forecast of those two low pressure systems. Alrighty, so looking at tomorrow's rainfall, we can see some uh, rain across southern Queensland associated with some showers and thunderstorms that could develop there uh, in, in response to a trough system and an upper level feature. Across the southwestern parts of Queensland, isolated activity, much more scattered activity across northwestern Queensland, the Gulf Country, Western Peninsula, uh, and into the Northern Territory. Heaps and heaps of showers and storms. It's very much hit and miss, but it's more hit than miss across most of this region. Uh, across the Northern Kimberley, some showers and thunderstorms, extending also into the interior parts with the possibility of some isolated convective activity uh, with that other deep trough system through this part of Western Australia. Across Queensland, uh, possibility of some isolated, isolated showers 
showers along the coast and also in the North Peninsula. On Thursday, we have an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity across the Gulf Country, the Roper MacArthur district of, of NT. Uh, also, most of that activity in the North Kimberley starts to push offshore. Some, uh, At least the stronger activity tends to push a little bit offshore into the Timor Sea uh, in preparation for the coming monsoon. Across southeast Queensland, isolated showers and storms probably making it to the coast here, uh, extending also inland, but a lack of moisture is going to keep those fairly isolated. Also, isolated showers along the coastal fringe of northern Queensland. As we track through to Friday, you can start to see these rainfall totals really beginning to increase in 24 hours across the Gulf. That's in association with that low that's starting to develop here in the southwestern Gulf, starting to see that convergent northwest to northeast flow here in the Gulf of Carpentaria, starting to create some big falls. Uh, Western Peninsula, heaps and heaps of showers and thunderstorms in that region. Uh, also extending into the northwest and possibly into the central inland parts of Queensland as well. A little trough from the Coral Sea pushes westwards and enhances the shower activity across central Queensland and also the tropical coast of Queensland on Friday, as well as, as scattered showers and thunderstorms across the NT and the North Kimberley as well, extending inland with that secondary trough system through WA. On Saturday, you can see some really big rainfall totals now and a lot of a lot of rain coming into the northeast Arnhem district in a very convergent and strong northwesterly flow pushing into that uh, low pressure or the very weak low pressure system that's forming here over the southern gulf. Uh, you can see very coastal, a lot of that gulf activity, maybe even just off the coast. So Mornington Island in with a really good chance of some big falls there. Uh, also extending into the northwest northwestern parts of the peninsula, Extending also through the uh, northern inland parts of Queensland too, we could see some isolated convective showers and thunderstorms through there, even into the central western districts of Queensland as well. Still some isolated showers tending scattered across the tropical coast associated with that easterly deep flow that the uh, trough helped to bring through or rather enhance, and uh, isolated to scattered showers and thunderstorms across the Kimberley and the interior of WA. So that's what's coming in a nutshell, folks. Because things are getting interesting now, our... Public updates are now going to be issued twice a week on Tuesday and Friday. And our subscriber updates for the future Aussie Cyclones page will be issued daily. Have a great rest of the week and I'll talk to you again on Friday and see how we're progressing with that monsoonal influence. And our two little tropical lows. Or future tropical lows.